Okay, so we've got a pretty hefty stack of analyst reports here on BYD. Uh-huh. And it looks like you want to like really get a handle on yeah. this whole electric vehicle situation they've got going on. Yeah. Especially with, you know, them going global. Absolutely. Which is huge. That's huge. And you picked a good time to dive in because August 2024. Oh yeah. It was a huge E month for them. Yeah. Over 373,000 vehicles sold. It's unbelievable. That's wild. That's not just a win that's like complete takeover. Yeah. So what's got everyone so excited about BYD? Well, I think what we're seeing here is that BYD is really approaching the market differently. Okay. You know, unlike some of their competitors who are, you know, assembling parts from various sources. Right. BYD is vertically integrated. Okay. So they produce their own batteries. They even produce some of their own chips. Wow. Talk about control in your own destiny. So they're like the ultimate DIYers of the EV world. Exactly. And this strategy gives them incredible flexibility. Okay. So you've got Tesla, for example. They oh. have a very focused approach, right? Mm -hmm. Specializing in these sleek, high-end electric cars. Yeah. BYD, on the other hand, yeah. casting a much wider net. Okay. They've got everything really from compact city cars to luxury sedans wow. to a full lineup of hybrids see that's what's interesting to me because yeah. it's like they're not just specializing in one thing right they're covering all their bases absolutely and that allows them to tap into different segments of the market to be more adaptable to consumer demand and it seems to be working because they're aiming to sell a staggering four million vehicles in 2024 that's the goal. That's a, that's a lot of vehicles. Mm, ambitious. So what's the key to hitting that target? Well, I think it comes down to innovation okay. and a keen understanding of market trends. Correct. One word. DMI 5.0. DMI 5.0. This isn't just like a new hybrid system. Mm -hmm. This is like their masterpiece. Okay. They've packed these new models with high-end specs, cutting-edge technology, yeah. and they're not afraid to charge a premium for it. So are people actually biting? Oh, yeah. Are they willing to shell out the extra cash for these, like, souped-up hybrids? Absolutely. The demand is incredible. Wow. In fact, there's already a backlog on some of their most popular DMI 5.0 models. Which ones? Like the Kin-L and the Seals 06 DMI. Okay. People are literally lining up to get their hands on these vehicles. Now, those are some powerful endorsements. Right. But their success isn't limited to just China. Right. Let's talk about their global ambitions, yeah. because from what I'm seeing here, they're making some major moves. Absolutely. So we've established BYD is like the king of the castle in China. It seems that way, right. But what about their plans for like world domination? World domination. Again, taking those shiny new EVs global. Yeah. I'm sure there are a few hurdles to jump over when it comes to like expanding beyond their home turf. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's one thing to dominate your domestic market. Right. But cracking the global market is a whole other ball game. Yeah. And you've hit on a key point. Okay. There are definitely challenges. Yeah. But BYD is being very strategic about their approach. Okay. Um, so right now their export strategy is focused on a few key markets. Brazil, mm -hmm. Thailand, okay. and Israel. That's an interesting mix of countries. Right. Why those specific regions? Well, it comes down to a combination of factors. Uh, First, all three countries have seen a huge surge in demand for electric vehicles. Makes sense. Consumers are becoming more eco-conscious. Right. Governments are offering incentives to encourage EV adoption. Yeah. So BYD is capitalizing on that growing demand. So it's all about striking while the iron is hot. Exactly. But there's another crucial factor at play here. Okay. Trade relations. Why? China has relatively favorable trade agreements with Brazil, Thailand, and Israel. I see. Which minimizes complications, keeps costs down. Right. Which is particularly important when you're trying to, you know, break into new markets. For sure. And establish a competitive edge. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Right. Which brings us to... Ah, Europe. Yeah. They're kind of a big deal in the automotive world. Kind of a big deal. I'd say a huge deal. So how is BYD approaching that notoriously tough market? Well, it is a whole different ballgame. Really? Oh, yeah. You've got established players with decades of brand loyalty. Right. You've got a complex regulatory landscape. Uh -huh. And then there's elephant in the room. Let's hear it. Those pesky EU tariffs. <laughs> 
Ugh, don't get me started on those tariffs. Right. Yeah, those tariffs are a real thorn in the side. And they're a pain. So how is BYD navigating that challenge? They're playing the long game. Okay. They understand that conquering Europe won't happen overnight. Right. So they're strategically dipping their toes and okay. testing the waters no. with a measured approach. So they're not going all in right away. No, no, no. They're being cautious. Okay. Um, right now, their monthly deliveries to Europe are hovering around 2,000 to 3,000 vehicles. Okay, so relatively small still. Relatively small. Gotcha. They're focusing on building brand awareness, Okay. establishing a foothold, uh -huh. and gradually increasing their market share. So slow and steady wins the race. Exactly. Okay. They're also carefully choosing which models to introduce in Europe. Which ones are they going with? They're focusing on the ones that align with European preferences and regulations. So they're doing their homework. Oh, absolutely. They have to. Okay. So smart strategy, play it cool, mm -hmm. analyze the market, adjust accordingly. Precisely. Now, while their overall approach in Europe is cautious, okay, they have seen some early success in the UK. The UK. That's interesting. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Well, for one, the UK has been a bit more welcoming to Chinese automakers. Okay. Um, they're open to new entrants in the market. Okay. And there's a growing appetite for electric vehicles there. Right, so there's less of that, you know. It's baggage. Yeah. Exactly. So they're focusing on markets where the doors are already slightly ajar. Yes. While they work on prying open those tougher markets like the rest of the EU. It's a good strategy. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. But let's talk about the elephant in the room again. Oh, boy. Price. Yeah. How can BYD compete on price right. when those hefty EU tariffs are factored in? That is the million-dollar question, isn't it? Right. So in Southeast Asia, they're leveraging their cost advantages okay. to offer very competitive pricing. They're going head-to-head -head with their rivals. Wow. Making their EVs an attractive option for budget-conscious consumers. Smart. But Europe is a different story. Yeah. Those tariffs make it much harder to compete on price alone. So how are they approaching pricing in Europe? They're taking a more nuanced approach. Okay. So in some cases, they're absorbing some of the tariff costs. Really? To stay competitive. Wow. In other cases, they're positioning their vehicles in a slightly higher price bracket. Okay. And they're emphasizing the value, the technology, the features that come with a BYD. So it's not just about the price, it's about the whole package. Exactly. They're not just competing on price, they're competing on the overall package. That's smart. That's a good approach. It is. Okay, so we've got this careful dance they're doing in Europe. But at the same time, they're like totally owning it in other places. Yeah. They're a little more, you know, welcoming. Absolutely. But there's this whole other thing that I think is so interesting. Okay. It's... Like a total game changer when it comes to going global. Yeah. Tell me more. Building factories outside of China. Oh, yeah. This is where their strategy gets really interesting. Right. It's not just exporting cars anymore. They're yeah. exporting their know-how. Right. Their manufacturing expertise. Yeah. And we're seeing this wave of BYD factories popping up all over the globe. Where are they building them? So as we speak, they've got plants in... Thailand and Uzbekistan, okay. those are already up and running, churning out BYDs wow. for local markets. Okay, so less reliance on shipping closer to the customer. Exactly. It's all about strategic location. What's next? Where are they going next with this? Next on the list. Yeah. Brazil and Hungary. Interesting. And those are both really good for different reasons. Oh, yeah. They've really thought this through. Right. Geographic location, access to resources, skilled workforce. They're playing chess while everyone else is playing checkers. That's a good way to put it. Right. But let's move beyond, like, the logistics and talk about the tech for a second. Yeah, let's geek out a little. Because these aren't just cars. They're rolling tech hubs. Absolutely. They're pushing the boundaries. And there's this driver assistance system, right? You're talking about their DePilot 3.0 ADS system. Yeah. Tell me about this. Okay. So ADS stands for Advanced Driver Assistance Systems. Okay. So think features that make driving safer and less stressful. So like lane assist and adaptive cruise control, that sort of thing? Exactly. All the good stuff, but they're taking it several steps further. How so? We're talking LiDAR NVIDIA chips, like cutting edge tech here. Okay. So they're not messing around. No, they're not. This is serious tech. But is it available like across the board? That's the interesting thing. Right now, it's only on their Han model. The Han. Their top of the line luxury sedan. Ah, so it's like the, you know, the fancy one. Yeah, it's like their flagship model. To show off <laughs> what they can do. Exactly. Do. It's like a rolling advertisement for their tech. So will we see 
you know, trickle down to the other models? That's the million dollar question, right? Yes. Will they let the masses have nice things? Right, because that's a big decision if they do. Huge. It could change the whole game. Okay, so we've got the global domination plan, the factories, yeah. the tech, the cars themselves. Right. It's a lot to be excited about. It really is. BYD is on a roll. But it can't all be smooth sailing, can it? There have to be some challenges. Oh, of course, every company faces hurdles. What are some of the things that could trip them up? Well, one of the biggest is obviously competition. Right, everyone's trying to get in on this EV action. Exactly, the market is getting crowded. So who are they up against? Well, in China, you've got Volkswagen, Geely, Great Wall Motor, all vying for the same customers. So those are some heavyweight contenders right there. Oh, yeah, and then, of course, there's the elephant in the room. Tesla. Tesla, always a force to be reckoned with. So it's a real showdown brewing. It's going to be epic. So where does that leave BYD? What's the outlook? Keep your eye on their plug-in hybrid strategy. The BHEVs. Yep. That's a market that's about to explode, especially in places where people aren't ready to go fully electric just yet. Interesting. Okay. And BYD is so well positioned to own that space. Why is that? They've got the tech, the production capacity, the brand recognition. It's all there. So they're thinking ahead. Always one step ahead. So to sum it all up, it sounds like BYD is playing for keeps. They're all in. Making big moves, taking risks. They're not afraid of a challenge, that's for sure. But will it be enough? Can they keep this momentum going? Can they replicate this success on a global scale? That's the billion dollar question, right? Only time will tell. It's going to be exciting to watch it all unfold. Absolutely. This is just the beginning. BYD, China's electric vehicle champion, charging ahead. They're a force to be reckoned with, no doubt about it. And that's a wrap on this deep dive into BYD. Until next time.